Now, you know, this is a, this is a whole other sermon. One kiss and one clave. Orpah kissed her mother. But Ruth clave that held on to her. See, some of y'all get too fooled by the kiss. I wish, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm not going to preach it. You think that the kiss is everything. But, but this kiss ended in a goodbye. Whereas Ruth said, no, it ain't enough for me to just give you a kiss on the cheek. What I need to do is, ooh, I'm holding on. I'm holding on to you. Ruth and Pride, please don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Now, here is my point. This is what she said. Now, listen very close. She said, where you go, I will go. Do you hear what she's saying? This is a Moabite. She said, where you go, I'll go. I ain't through. And where you stay, that means where you live, no matter where it is, I don't care if it's in the gutter, wherever you live, I'll live. Your people will be, no, she didn't say when I come, when I come around your people, they're going to have to recognize me as a Moabite. Like Christians feel like when I come into the family, they got to still recognize me as a German. Or they got to recognize me as a Celtic. Or they got to recognize, are y'all in here with me? In other words, in other words, if I have pagan worship, if I'm doing things that are ungodly, then the grace of y'all just got to cover that because I'm not changing. No, yes, you are. If you're going to be a part of this family, then the people of Yah must become, watch this now, your people. The family becomes one. In Ruth's mind, there was no two families. Let's see if I'm, let's see, let's see if I'm, let's see if I'm still in the house. Said, your people will be my people and your Elohim, my Elohim. Your most high, my most high. She understood what it meant to be a part of the children of Israel. It meant coming under the authority of their Elohim or most high, who is Yahuwah. You don't come into this family bringing your gods from where you came from. Talking about we in the same house, but we got two different gods. And let me tell you something else that's blasphemy that's going on in the churches today. I'm talking about pure blasphemy. Some people say God, the Father, he's the God of the Jews. Jesus Christ, he's the God of the Christians. We don't do nothing that Yahuwah said. We only follow what Jesus said. Really? Where'd you get that from? When, when, when Yeshua himself said, I don't do nothing I don't see my father do. I don't say anything I haven't heard my father say. My father and I, am I in that? Any Hebrews listen to me tonight? Or how many? One. Ephesians, you don't have to turn to it. Ephesians tells us, matter of fact, let's turn to it. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, y'all, I'm all off my page. I ain't got to ask yet. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. because I got to really, really drive this point home because we still have some, some, ooh, some stiff neck Hebrews. And we've been trying to share this message across the world, worldwide, that have not come to the realization that there cannot be two gods. There can't be two different laws for two different people. There, there only can be one law in one house. But don't believe me. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4.
I'm reading again out of a different translation. But you've got your King James. As a prisoner of Yah, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the vocation or the calling which you have received. Be completely humble and gentle and patient, bearing with one another in love and making every effort to keep the unity of oh, the what of the spirit? Unity, one. If it's two different families, it's got to be in two different gods. That means it's two different spirits. Oh, but don't believe me. The unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, for there is one body, not two. That solves the issue. It ain't no two bodies. We don't have the body of the Jews and the body of the Christian. We have the whole, the, the, what we call the Jews and the Gentiles who have placed their faith in the Most High become one body. Do you know that the person who wrote this is a Hebrew Israelite? He's not a Greek. The Apostle Paul is not a Greek. He's Hebrew, telling us there's one body. But then we got folks saying, no, it's two. No, I'm going to go with, I'm going to take my chances with the Most High Yah and with his son Yehoshua and with one of his apostles, Rabbi Shaul. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called into how many hopes? One, one hope. Because there's one Yah, one faith. Not, wait a minute. I thought it was a faith for the Jews and a faith for the Gentiles. No, you don't see that in the Bible. That's an erroneous teaching. One Yah, one faith, one baptism, one most high and father over all, who is over all and through all and in all. That's what this feast day teaches us to remember. That when he married the children of Israel and set them apart, he made them one, oh, I almost said one nation under group. I'm messing up in here. He made them one nation under Yah. One nation. And if we're going to get saved, quote unquote, we have to realize that our salvation has to do with being adopted into this nation. Which, by the way, I know the Bible Fellowship Church know this, but some people worldwide may not. When they left African Egypt on Passover night, the Bible says they left a mixed multitude. But on the mountain, you don't hear the Most High saying, all right, now all y'all that's not blood-born Hebrews stand over here. And all of y'all who are from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribes, y'all stand over here. Now let me give the blood Hebrews one law and then I'm going to give all the mixed multitude folk another law. It's not what he did. On the mountain he recognized them all including the mixed multitude. He recognized them all and gave them a title, the children of Israel. Why? Because just like Ruth said, your Yah is my Yah. That's what these people had said. And that's what we say when we get saved. Am I, am I in this room? Am I so quiet in here? I'm happy. You in the book of Ephesians, flip over to, uh, go, go back toward the beginning. In chapter 2. I'm reading from another translation. You just flip over one page. Normally you could be right in chapter 2. Verse 11. Therefore remember that formerly you are Gentiles by birth. He was talking to the he, he was talking to the to the Greeks now, to the Ephesians, those living in, in Ephesus. Now there was a, uh, a mixed multitude there too. Now watch this. 
and called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men. Remember, talking to these, to these, uh, these heathens that have followed Yah. Remember that at the time you, that, remember that at that time you were separated from Hamasiah, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of the promise without hope and without Yah in the world. What a verse! He said, remember where y'all came from. You had no part with us. Matter of fact, you didn't even have God. You didn't have nothing. He, but, but, but he says, but now in Hamasiah, Yahushua, you who were once afar off have been brought near through the blood of Hamasiah. For he himself is our peace who made the two one and have destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with his commandments and regulations. Actually, what he was saying was there was a time that the Jews and the Gentiles, whoo, look at the, look who just came in. The world travelers, the puddle jumpers. Amen. Had they feet in the sands of Florida. Amen. Good to see y'all. So what, what he's trying to tell us is that it was Yah who blessed us to be adopted into Yah's family. And that has to do again with Shalom. Now, quickly, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm over time, but I want to share something before we go. I want you to see this. Quickly now, turn to, let's just jump down here. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Because I need to show you something. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And this goes out to all of the pastors out, out there who, I'm being nice, as nice as I can be. My daughter looking at me like, be nice, I'm going to be nice. To all the pastors out there who may be slow of heart, slow of learning, and a little stiff neck, and doing more buddying than you're doing studying. I want to talk to you for a moment. The Bible is one continuous book. What we see in what you call the New Testament has its roots in what you call the Old Testament. Whatever happens in what's called Torah, the first five books, and the Law and the Prophet is going to happen over and over and over again throughout the book of the Revelation. There is no such thing as some new thing. In Acts chapter 2, unfortunately, we have a lot of Christian preachers and pastors teaching that this day was a new day in the life of the church. And they call it the birth of the church. The reason that they call it the birth of the church is because, now watch this, they call it that because they say that's when the Holy Ghost came. But the reality is the church did not begin on Pentecost. The church began at Sinai. Peter said, all you got to do is look at the church in the wilderness. Now, how can the church be in the wilderness with Moses? But have its beginning on what the word, what the Greek word says, Pentecost. Watch this. In Jerusalem. No, because the word church is really the Hebrew word congregation. And when did we become a congregation? At Sinai. So what is the real reason of Pentecost? I'm about to tell you. Woo-wee. And I'm so glad to be the one to do it. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Let's look at 
verse number one. And I need somebody uh, who can have a good, good, strong outside voice to read it so we can get it on film. Anybody, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Stand up, Steve. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Keep going. And suddenly they hear the sound of heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Keep going. They began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men. All right, pause right there. And there were dwelling. That means they was hanging out in Jerusalem during that feast. Devout men. These were people who were still devoted. That's what the word devout means. They were still devoted to the laws given from Sinai. That's why they were in Jerusalem. Because, brothers and sisters, this feast is not called Pentecost. Pente is the, comes from the Greek, the, the Greek word pente is 50. But this is not a proper representation of the feast they were at. The feast they were at, according to Yah, how many died? 49. Exactly. Why is it 49 days, Miguel? It was uh, 7 times 7. Because it was 7 times 7. It's called the Feast of Weeks. It's Shavuot. They were in Jerusalem, devoted men, now we're going to find out later, living in other places. But they were so devoted to the feast of Shavuot that they came to Jerusalem and was there on that 49th day. The word Pentecost is because the uh, Greek didn't understand that you don't count from Passover. You count from the day after Passover to get to Shavuot. So we have a whole we got, we, let me tell you this is a funny thing to me. We have a whole denomination of people who call themselves Pentecostal. How is that even possible to call yourself to say the Spirit told you that you're Pentecostal, and the word Pentecost is, uh, is, is not even what the name of this feast is. I got another one for you. There's another passage where, where in the King James, it uses the word Easter. And the real word in the Greek is not Easter at all. It's Passover. In other words, what I'm trying to show you is this feast is connected with Shavuot. Miguel, find that verse for me, or anybody, find the verse for me in Jeremiah where he says, um, I will write my laws. I think it's Jeremiah chapter 30, 30 or 33, but I think it's 30. I will write my laws in their heart. I need you to find, it. find that verse for me. I believe it's in Jeremiah. I didn't put it on my notes. But I need, huh? Can you read it? Um, this is a covenant that I will make. Woo! Hold on. We got hold on, hold on, hold on. That's it right there. Please listen to this. Don't believe me. Listen to the Bible. Go ahead. Go ahead. Start over. Uh -huh, start over. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, says Yahweh. Uh-huh. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Okay, stop. That's enough. Hold it right there. I'm going to put my law where? He said first, in their mind. 
and in their what? Now, what he's putting in their mind and in their heart is his law. <laughs> I mean, it's right there. And I told you I was going to show you something this week that I didn't get a chance to show you last week. I'm going to show you that what they call Pentecost, which is the Feast of Shavuot, is the exact same, the exact same thing that happened on the mountain happened on this Shavuot after the resurrection of Yeshua. He gave his laws to them. But the first time he gave them, he gave them on tablets of stone. So the prophet says, Yah has showed me something. He's going to, because y'all done broke his laws to pieces. You know Hebrews, we broke every law and then came up with some laws and broke them. You know, Hebrews been bad since the beginning. You know that. So Yah says, what I'm going to do in the future is I'm going to write my laws. What laws? The same laws he gave Moses. The same laws he gave his children. Didn't I just tell you ain't but one law? You can't come up with new laws. But this time I'm going to write them on their mind and in their hearts. I told you this last week and now I'm going to give you the kicker. The Holy Spirit and the laws of the Most High are equal. I don't know. You see that sign equal? They're equal. Equal. The Holy Spirit and Yah's laws are the same. In other words, you're not going to have his laws fighting against his spirit and you're not going to have his spirit disagreeing with his laws so anytime his spirit anytime you say something about oh the spirit told me something and it doesn't agree with the manuscript you lying on the holy spirit now I don't know about your spirit because it could be telling you anything but there's no way Pastor McKay know I'm telling the truth about this there's no way that the Holy Spirit is ever going to go across or is ever going to go opposite from any of the laws of Yah. He can't. The Holy Spirit of Yah is Yah. <laughs> Listen, your spirit can't go different than you. You and your spirit. <laughs> Y'all, I'm confused the same. That's why Growing up in church, um, I understand the doctrine of the Trinity, but here's what people do with that doctrine. They say they believe in one God, but in their brain, they believe in three. So they say, God is the God of the Old Testament. He's old and foggy and done away with. Jesus was the God of the New Testament church, but you know now Jesus is being overruled. We are operating by the Spirit now, honey. So no matter, it's what the Spirit say that counts. You'd be like, wait, huh? Yeah, so if two homosexuals want to get married and the Spirit is leading them, then they ought to be able to get married. I mean, come on now. We got a guy dress up like a woman and make money and make movies. And we pay a lot of money to see a cross-dresser. And everybody will fight you if you tell them that he ain't supposed to be cross-dressing. Men don't wear bras and panties and dresses. Are y'all in the room with me? But oh no, no, you can't say he you can't say he ain't no Christian. Okay, well maybe he is a Christian. Because I don't know what y'all believe in Christianity no more. Because you making up your own rules. There was a time when women couldn't wear lipsticks in Christianity. Now they can wear lipstick. There was a time when in Christianity they couldn't wear pants. Now they can wear... Y'all make up your mind. No, listen. When the Holy Spirit comes in your mind and in your heart, he's there to place... Listen, not your laws in your heart, but his revealed laws. Now let's see if I'm telling the truth. Go back to the Acts passage. Who's reading Acts for me? Stephen, rise up again, please. 
Ooh, y'all got my time. Time is going on. Right up. Be fast. No, no, take your time. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language. Come up closer. I, I want folks to hear this. Because I heard people talking about, well, you know, Pentecost is when we were speaking in tongues. You tie my shoe, I tie your shoe. You tie my shoe, I tie your shoe. I left in a Honda, came back in a Celica. No, man, we're not getting down with that. We're about to blow the, blow the top off of all that foolishness. Let's find out what really happened on that Shabbat. Galileans. Now all these folk preaching, they're from Galilee. Come on. And how hear we every man in our own tongue? Wait, how do we hear in our own language? Them folk from Galilee, that's the ghetto. How are these folk in the ghetto all of a sudden uh, waxing linguistic and are able to speak in several different dialects in such clarity that we're understanding it in our own language. Now, what language? We already know we're talking about devout Jews. So we're or devout men who were Hebrews. We know these are Hebrews. So they had a mother tongue, but they were they had moved away in the dispersion. They lived in other places. So what happens in time, just like us in America, in time you lost your native tongue and you started speaking another language, like we speak English. Some people that were living in Rome, they were speaking Roman. Some people were living in Asia, it's in there. They were speaking Asian. Some people were living in North Africa, they were speaking in an African tongue. But the disciples were preaching in such a way, or the people in the upper room, were preaching in such a way everybody heard them on that day. Go ahead. Parthians, Medes, Medes, Elamites, and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and in Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Crete, Cre Cyrene. Cre Cyrene, Libya. Go ahead. And strangers of Rome. Jews. Strangers from Rome. Go ahead. Jews and proselytes. Keep reading. Cretes and Arabians. <laughs> Cretes. Arabians? We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of Yah. Okay, stop right there. Don't sit down. Did you hear what they said? Yeah. They said, you hear all them places? It wasn't no babble. Look, y'all, listen. Back in the day of ignorance, you could get by with that. But now we live in a one-click world. Matter of fact, you ain't got a click. You can open your Bible and see they were speaking a language that was understood. Now let's see what the sermon was about. And they were all amazed. Uh-huh. Yeah. Saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. Stop. You know them Hebrews be drinking over there. <laughs> Them Hebrews is drunk. All right, come on. But Peter, standing up, but Kepha said, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you. Know this one thing. Go ahead. And hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose. See, it is but the third hour of the day. That's funny to me. He said. Now these Hebrews ain't drunk like you think. It ain't that they don't drink. It's just the third hour of the day. <laughs> it's a little early for drinking. But go ahead. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet of Joel. And it shall come to pass the last days, saith the Most High. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Go ahead. I'll pour out my spirit. We already read where he said in one other passage that in the last day he was going to place his laws in their heart. And mine, and then he says, I pour out my spirit. So his spirit and his laws are the same. But keep going, don't believe me. Read it. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Mm -hmm. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 
And I will show wonders in heaven above, Watch this. and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The, sh the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of Yahuwah comes. Pause. The thing I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to do it before the actual judgment. All right, keep reading. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Stop. Where did that line come from? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call the name of Yah shall be saved. Anybody know in this house? Besides Mo. Romans 10, 13. Where did Roman, where did Paul get it? He got it from Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy says it almost in quotes. Which is the book of the law. It's the, in other words, he's quoting the law to them in his sermon. Now keep reading. Watch. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yahushua of Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High among you, by miracles and wonders and signs, which the Most High did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him, being delivered by the... Determined council and foreknowledge. Determin Determinate council. Before knowledge of the most high, he had taken and by wicked hands had crucified and slain. He said, Y'all killed your Messiah based on based on the on the Tanakh. He came here and fulfilled everything he said, and then you killed him. But keep reading. Whom the Most High hath raised up. But the Most High overruled you, Hebrews. Having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held in other. And he got that from David. Go ahead. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw him who will always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Mm, mm, mm. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Roar, all of my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Mm. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Woo. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy confidence. He said, he said, this is based on the Old Testament. Keep reading. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and is sepulchre is with us unto this day. But therefore, being a prophet and knowing that the most high had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up. To sit on his throne. So, so wait a minute. He's still in Tanakh, right? So this whole this whole sermon is not about some new thing that is going on, but a fulfillment of something that's already been prophesied. Now, I want you to go all the way down to uh, verse thirty-seven. Let's just skip down to thirty-seven for time. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and sent unto, and sent unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And what was his response? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahushua HaMasiah, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, we didn't already study. So we know they're going to get the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the laws of Yah written in their hearts. It would be the Spirit that would now lead them. They said, what do we do? He said, repent. Now, where is that found? Is that a New Testament concept? Come on now, y'all. That's good. Appreciate it. He said, repent. And verse 39 said, the promise is for you and your children. And for all who are afar off. That's the promise. It's not just. The promise is for you and your kids. You are living and experiencing the promise of Shavuot. It, it was the, that's the day it was. It was not a, some weird thing called Pentecost. And some new feast. No. It was the same Shavuot. They had been waiting for this day a long time. Not only was it a Shavuot, but we studied this in our Sunday school class. Steve taught this. It was also a Jubilee year. And a Jubilee year represented a time when all debts had to be forgiven and all slaves had to be set free. 
So what happened at Shavuot? It was the time that the slaves, come on now, had been set free, their sins had been forgiven, and they were now the people of Yah. Last verse, we're going home. I got, I got, uh, I got some young fellas from uh, um, uh, San Diego, only 85 years old, and that's still young, in Daly City, 80 years. Amen. We got to get home so we can tell some more jokes. Amen. I'm not waiting to go home, but, but watch this. Turn to Revelation because I want to show you how this all will end up. Revelation, and just for time, I'll pick it up here. I'll pick it up here next week, and we'll, we'll, we'll just take one more week at this because I don't want to rush through this, but I just want you to see something. Um, let's use, uh, Miguel, what, what version do you have? King James. All right, read it loud. Stand up, too. Please listen. Please listen to this. Beginning, let's just start at verse 1, because we're going to end it today. Right here. Go ahead. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the master, our Elohim. For true and righteous are his judgments. True and righteous are his what? Judgments. Judgments. Keep going. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up from forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped Yahuwah that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our Elohim, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for our master Elohim omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. It started with Shavuot. Now we're getting ready to see another marriage of his people under his leadership or his domain in the book of the Revelation. So you saw it on the mountain, Sinai. You saw it at Jerusalem. And now you're seeing it in the Revelation. Keep reading. And his wife has made herself ready. Wait, and his wife or the bride has made herself ready. How? By following the laws and precepts of the Most High and getting being washed by the word, not having spot or wrinkle. Keep going. And to her was granted that she would be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's all. That's all. Wait, wait one, one more. I'm sorry. And he has said unto me, right, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage of the supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of Yahweh. These are the true sayings. The bride is the bride because of the righteousness that she's now living and staying spotted from the world. If you don't know the background of this text, Yeshua, <laughs> the Most High, has just killed the whore of Babylon and wiped out the enemies. And those that were on the side of Yah are now blessed and privileged to be united as one family with Yahushua, his only begotten son. It's called the marriage of the Lamb. And, and, and here in 19, and we, we're going to stop tonight, but here in 19, you see something very powerful. You see what's called the Lamb's wife. And it says she made herself ready. Now, I got news for you. Anybody in here engaged? And you sleeping around with a whole bunch of folk before your wedding day, you ain't making yourself ready. 
That's why y'all said thou shall have no other what gods before me. We about to get married. I gotta lay down some ground rules. No gods before me. Don't be carrying your ex boyfriends and your ex lovers in your wallet on your Facebook page. I wish I had a witness here. Don't be making no graven images. Hallelujah. Don't take my name in vain because I ain't playing. Remember a Sabbath day. That means we got to have a date night once a week, every Friday evening. Until Saturday evening, as me and you remember the Shabbat to keep it holy. Honor your mom and dad. These are all of the rules of this relationship that we have. Don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery, and don't covet. Don't bear false witness because you've been with me now. I don't know what you did back in the day, but now that you're with me, these are the rules and regulations whereby we live. That's why once a year we, rec we recognize Shavuot. It had happened in the past. It happened at what they call the day of Pentecost, which was Shavuot. And there will be another wedding again. The ceremony will happen again in the book of the Revelation. Every head bow, every eye closed. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this opportunity to share this truth with your people. I pray that it will be received well and our lives will be changed. In your name we pray. Amen.